Hey everybody, today I'm going to show you how you can easily bring a dead power tool battery back to life when your charger won't bring it back to a full charge and says it's defective. Now a lot of times, especially with lithium packs, the chargers are very sensitive about the low voltage of the pack and if it drops below a certain threshold, it's gonna tell you it's defective, even though you can revive it fairly easily. Now in this case, I have a 20 volt max lithium pack that's on a Porter cable drill, and when I pull it on the trigger, you'll see that it does work. That means that the battery pack is not completely dead, but when I take this pack and I put it on this charger, a red light starts flashing telling me it's defective. That means that the voltage of the pack is below the threshold set by the manufacturer, and as far as they're concerned, the pack is defective. Now many times if you get a brand new tool out of the box, or let's say you leave something on it that might have a power draw such as an LED light, it will drain these down below that threshold and you would have to spend 50 or 100 bucks to replace it. So what I wanna do in this video is show you how you can revive these. Your charger will accept them and bring them back to a full charge and you will save yourself a lot of money. Unlike older NICAD battery packs, which might have a similar size, weight, and feel to today's lithium units, the cells inside are going to be completely different. With the older NICAD packs, even if you drop them down to completely discharge, normally you could charge them back up fairly easily. But the new lithium packs, when they drop down below a certain voltage, the cells can corrupt. That can cause them to overheat, short circuit, catch on fire, or even explode. So if you do try to charge one of these back up, make sure you're not indoors, specifically in your house, in your garage, or near anything flammable. It's best to do this out in your driveway or even a parking lot to minimize the risk to you or anything around you. To show you what's going on with this battery pack, we'll pop it on the charger and take a look at the battery status indicator light. Now you can see a solid green light would mean it's fully charged, a blinking green light would mean it is charging, and then a rapidly flashing red light means the battery pack is defective. Now the reason it thinks this battery pack is defective is because the overall voltage has dropped below the safe range of the charger and it will not apply any power. But when we take the same battery pack, we plug it on our drill and then pull it on the trigger, you can see that there is power still in the pack. So that means that we should be able to charge this back up and revive it. Using a digital multimeter, we can check the voltage of the defective pack, taking our positive lead and attaching that to the positive terminal. Taking our negative lead and attaching that to the negative terminal, it's gonna show a pack voltage of 13.9 volts. We need to bring that up in order for the charger to think that this is a good pack, and then it would apply power to fully charge it. To bring the voltage up in our defective pack, we will want to use another battery that does have the same voltage. Specifically, an 18 volt battery and a 20 volt battery are going to be the exact same except for a marketing term describing them. With the 20 volt max describing the voltage without any load being applied, and the 18 volt battery describing the voltage when a load is being applied. As you can see with the digital multimeter connected to the Milwaukee M18 battery, its voltage without a load is coming in at over 20 volts. So what we'll do is connect the two of these. And just like connecting jumper cables in your car, when you would have a good battery and a dead battery, you connect the positive terminal to the positive terminal and the negative terminal to the negative terminal. That means that the two battery packs will eventually equalize and then they will have the exact same voltage. Because that voltage will be above the range, which is going to be the low range on our charger, when we plug that battery back into the charger, since it will be above the cutoff, it will start charging it. Now the one thing you want to keep in mind if you are going to do this, you do want to match up your battery packs with the identical voltages. Because if we tried to equalize it with let's say a 12 volt pack, this does not have the amount of voltage we need in order to bring our pack back to a usable level. If we connect these two, there's a good chance that both battery packs could end up being damaged. The gauge and length of the wire is going to be important, and if you notice the two leads that I've already made, I've used a 12 gauge wire and I have a fairly short length. This means that it won't overheat on me and it can carry the power with no issues. 
And if you've noticed, I've taken some ring terminals and soldered them on the end of these wires, but you could easily crimp these on the same way and have an equally effective connection. The reason I went with a ring terminal, it's completely flat and it's going to be the same width as the terminals on the bottom of the drill that plugs into the battery pack. That means using the same exact ports, I'll have great surface contact, but more importantly, I'm not going to accidentally damage something. If I had used alligator clips with a thin gauge wire, although it would connect the two, it would not be effective at carrying that load and these could overheat on me, or the alligator clips could actually damage the batteries. By going this route and taking a little bit of extra time to make these connectors, I'm not going to damage either battery in the process. To connect the two batteries, I'm going to take my two leads and I'll connect one to the two positive terminals and I'll connect the other to the two negative terminals. This is going to allow them to synchronize as far as the power levels and I'll let them sit for roughly five to ten minutes. After that time, I'm going to unplug it. We'll take a reading of both batteries as far as the voltage and then we'll see if the porter cable will charge on that charger. Okay, it's been just over five minutes. I'm gonna go ahead and remove the leads one at a time. And now we'll go ahead and take a voltage reading on each battery pack. First, we'll take a look at the M18. And with it originally, it was roughly at 20.4 volts. Now connecting those leads, we can see that it's roughly at 19 volts, meaning that some of the energy in this battery pack did transfer over to the porter cable. When we switch the two, we'll go ahead and see exactly how much transferred. So now taking those same leads and plugging it in the porter cable, we'll know exactly how much power did transfer over. Now we're at over 16 volts, and this started out at under 14. Now we'll go ahead and pop this on the charger and see if it's going to charge. When we initially plugged the battery pack in this charger, the LED light was blinking very fast and it was red. That did indicate that the battery pack was defective. But now that we've charged it up off the M18, when we click it into place, you're going to see a slow blinking green light. That means it's above the range, it's applying power charging the pack, and then when it is a solid green light, it means that the pack is going to be fully charged. So once the battery pack has fully charged, just pop it off the charger, put it back on your tool, and you can get right back to work. Now this was effective because it did not drop below the threshold of actually corrupting the cells inside the battery. If that had happened, it could have short-circuited, it could have damaged the other battery, caught on fire, or even exploded. You never want to do this indoors or around anything flammable. And if you're going to take the risk of trying to charge a lithium pack back up, after your charger will not charge it, make sure you're outside so if there is a problem, you're not going to run into more problems because of that. Specifically, you don't want to hurt yourself or burn your garage or your house down. So when you're working with a lithium pack, if your charger is not going to charge it and you don't feel comfortable doing this, turn it back into the manufacturer or send it out for recycling. It's a lot cheaper to go ahead and just buy a battery pack than risking burning your house down in order to save a few dollars. Now in this case, we were able to save roughly $50 to $100 by reviving this pack. And now we have maximum power, meaning we can get back to work and we don't have to go to the store and buy a replacement. If you like this video, please click like. If you like my channel, please click subscribe. And thanks for watching.